really know what I should do during that bit, <laughs> because it, it it's the it's the lead over to the to the you know the main part of the podcast, and realistically, I I should just wait. I should just wait for the music to start, but it's a fucking great song, and Mr. Collins, thou art the man. So welcome back to another episode of the deductionist podcast ladies and gentlemen and any dogs that are listening nearby i welcome you um you all know why you're here you all know what's happening and what it is that we're going to talk about and there is kind of a a a format of sorts that is presenting itself over these recent weeks i have uh, um designs on creating a, a, a setup with my all-time favorite chair um but it's just a case of making that happen good evening craig and a a jolly good boon to km amir kasru i i tried to pronounce that i'm not sure if that's correct but welcome so um let's let's get the first thing out of the way uh, the question that's all that's dying to be on everyone's lips that's dying to be that doesn't make sense that is on everyone's lips i'm sorry it's coming to the end of a very long very kind of seventh gear with little reward kind of week so that that is the reason for my current mood <laughs> in that way so here we go the monographs two the books are on their way to me so there were those of you that asked for signed copies as part of the kickstarter they are on the way to me so what that means is as soon as they arrive which normally takes for big orders a couple of days normally takes a couple of days and ups have been pretty good it's it's thursday at the time of recording here uh, uh though it will go out live uh, though it, it will go out uh, properly tomorrow um Saturday, I'm hoping they will be here, which means that by the time I've signed and send them and sent them back, that will be sort of Thursday-ish when they get back to the publisher, and then fingers crossed, all being well, they will be sent out to everyone that that purchased one. You know that they, they they do their deliveries in one fell swoop. So the signed ones and the non-signed ones will all go out together at the same time. Okay, so that's that's kind of where we are with that. I was I was texting a a, a group of friends today about uh, there's nothing more vomit inducing than having to play, pay a pretty big printing bill um, for for something that you wrote kind of an additional kick in the shin but there we are at least i will be able to keep myself in biscuits for the night <laughs> depending upon how hard i go at them um so yeah that's that part and today's episode is called the science of reading people which should if you aren't aware be considered an oxymoron in my opinion should be considered an oxymoron because there's many there's many pretenders to the throne there's many misconceptions there's many fallacies there's many great things um but th there is a little too many arguments about specific terminology and approaches and this kind of thing and it kind of got me thinking about an idea and i'd like your guys's feedback on it and, and, and it's the idea because as I'm getting close to having more time uh, uh, to start posting again on the main channel, uh, it kind of got me thinking about the the, uh, the the main appeal of these of these reacts and analysis videos that you see. In that, uh, I'm a, and it was an idea very much uh, very much started by uh, the hate comment from last week in that nobody clicks on them nobody's perhaps too much of a 
too much of a certain term very few people click on them to actually listen and engage in a discussion they mostly appear to click on them for the for the case of uh, uh, cognitive bias you know the sake of hearing some kind of almost scientific opinion that confirms some pre-held uh, opinion that you've already had on somebody that's in the papers at that particular time so what I thought was we well I, I could kind of do the antithesis of that and do the whole uh, uh, you know the the body language analysis it would be with a different term obviously one that doesn't cause a bit of nausea in the back of my throat um, but do that and as a way to encourage more of the particular questions that one can make about observations that can be drawn and connect towards research in the area and connect towards leading peers in the area and this type of thing as opposed to some self-professed uh i don't know gold star having youtube channel whatever that is right because one of the things that came out of my understanding of Rolf de Belli's work. For those of you that haven't read his stuff, wonderful, wonderful series of books, The Art of Thinking Clearly. But the, the one I'm specifically referencing now was called Stop Reading the News. Stop Reading the News. And it's mostly connected towards the critical thinking practice of things that we see online, though this was directed towards the newspaper. You know, if it's in the newspaper, it must be true. And the 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 lack of critical analysis on mass when it comes to these types of things that we see online you know oh this celebrity said it therefore it must be true this person's endorsed it there it, therefore it must be true and a uh, bob a pointer good friend of mine who i'm working with <laughs> he got into a bit of a discussion with joe navarro of all people on uh, on on linkedin the other day that was pretty funny and um, Bob's point was basically that just because you spent X amount of years working for the CIA or the FBI or whatever it is, doesn't automatically mean you know what you're talking about. Because very few people look past that. Right? There is this kind of attribution quality. It's, it's a logical fallacy in that sense that if he worked for the CIA, it must be true. If it, 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 that's almost as believable or almost as true as if it's on Facebook, it must be true because it's on Facebook. <laughs> so this is my kind of approach. Well, the thinking for, for how we could do it is taking stock of all of these ideas and all of these videos that come in and that, that pop up and the, the recent trends and whatnot. Uh, careful, Pascal, you're going to inflame my ego talking to me that way. <laughs> Bonsoir, mon ami. Um, to, to, to try and be a force, not for uh, any type of connection to a particular way of reading people, but so people can think more about what it is that they see, right? So it might be that you take, for example, O.J. Simpson, who died on the 10th, I think the article said, of cancer. That he, He'll be trending now at the minute. So naturally, there'll be some pretty big body language channels desperately searching for for vid for videos of the the OJ Simpson trial um, to analyze if I got on there or even some of you guys we got on a call you jumped in here and we took this properly and we looked at okay we've seen OJ Simpson do this could be this, could be this, could be this, could be this, could be this. How do we approach it? What does that connect to? What's our support for this information? How do we find out the basis for this support within this information? Who else can we speak to? You know, or what other work can we read that's connected to it? To, to try and really expand uh, the understanding of how this should be done. A la uh, Crest Research and Vincent Deneau. Um, 
of of the uh, uh, I think what was it called the Deception Research Society. Uh, check them out on YouTube. The the people that do those lectures, oh boy, are they good? Oh boy, are they good? Um, but yeah, to to try the to try and be the kind of antithesis of this. In that, I'm not going to pander to you for for your views. This is how it works. If you don't like it, go away. <laughs> Right, or let's stay and have a discussion about it. Not hurl obscenities back and forth, but that's kind of what I'm thinking at the minute. So what I'd like to hear from you, whether you think that's a good idea or not, or is it just an idea, or is it a bad idea, <laughs> right? Because at the minute, it's just it's just bubbling in the cauldron. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic phrase of mine. Uh, I, I talk about things that are bubbling in the cauldron of my prefrontal cortex. Basically, it's an idea that I can't shift. <laughs> and, and uh, 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 well, I could shift it by doing it. But if there are elements that I can't see because it's my idea, right? I'm trying to mitigate the potential for my own biases. Um, I'm giving this life, if you know, you know, in order to better, better crit critically analyze it. So the more people that know about this idea, the more people can pick it apart, tear it to shreds, change it, you know, etc., etc., etc. This type of thing. So that's the idea as it stands at the minute, but it kind of leads into what we're talking about today, right? Because when you look at the notion of reading people, it's a buzzword, right? Or, or a buzz term, rather, more so than anything. And I was having a discussion with a guy I used to work with, who's ex-CIA, uh, about the the term reading people. He didn't like it. And <laughs> can we hurl the odd obsed uh, the the odd obscenity? Would be right if we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, like if if it's on my channel, then uh, according to the monetization sequences, I would just need to make sure all of the information is known that there is curse words involved. That way they can channel their adverts accordingly or remove them altogether. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. If that's how you talk, that's how you talk. Right? It's not, it's not a grandstanding event that's pandering toward, towards um, um, the uninformed or the lack of experience or whatever it is in, in that particular situation. I would like more so than anything to spread a bit more of critical thought when it comes to this. That's all. Just a bit more of critical thought, right? Because critical thought doesn't really have uh, the, the capacity to be, no, it does. That's, I was trying to say it uh, uh, doesn't have the capacity for right or wrong, but it totally does, depending upon how critically you're thinking or the approach of critical thinking that you're taking. Basically, it, 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 the the concept of critical thinking should be without should be without bias. That's probably a better way of saying it. It should be without bias. It should be without emotion. So we bring that forth to this. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. I got sidetracked based on uh, Craig asking if we can swear, <laughs> which is kind of like asking me, is water wet? <laughs> um, we, we swear like sailors here. Um, although I've never actually heard a sailor swear, so I'm not entirely sure where that phrase comes from. Um, anyway, so I'm talking to this guy who used to work for the CIA. And um, he's doing his own thing now, uh, and I, I don't want to—I don't want to name drop him because he is a, he is kind of a name in this area. But if he doesn't want connecting towards this idea that I'm talking about of going, again, then that's up to him, right? I've not spoken about it, so just for the sake of of caution in this way, uh, he shall remain nameless. Anyway, he was saying that uh, uh, reading people gives the wrong. Uh, 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 gives the wrong impression because a person cannot be read like a book body language cannot be learned like a language in terms of this word means this you put these together and it creates this kind of a sentence 
That's I'm, we're, we're all aware of that by now. And my point towards him was that the term shouldn't matter. You, like, like I've said about uh, deduction, induction and abduction, I couldn't care less what you call it, so long as you're using the appropriate things properly. My go-to uh, buffoonery statement for this is you could call it clod-hopping bicycle trumpets for all I care. It doesn't matter, so long as you're using these types of details properly, in the correct way. And his point was, quite rightly so, might I add, what if people don't know that? Right? Which is which in, in that kind of in that kind of notion, the, the the mists cleared and it kind of separated. My connection towards terminology comes from my experience. Right? In that if you don't have experience, you need some of the terms in order to understand how to use them so that you can forget the terms right it is and i bring it back to him all the time it is the uh, uh when the ex when the opponent expand i contract and when he contract i expand and when the time is right i do not hit it hits all by itself the, you, like in this in the scrap you're not thinking bob weave rear up you're just acting but that only comes from the series of doing it over and over and over and over again. So that was an important lesson for me to learn. Um, because, like, years ago, I could never really get back. Well, call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, because I'm teaching it anyway. So I, we would go through the techniques and training and practicals. But the names are actually important. So this is why it connected to the idea of, of doing this on YouTube and it's particularly good with this being a podcast because we can address all of these types of things there as well let's have a look mr. Jane oh that makes sense yes it does uh, uh, Craig critical thinking in this would be amazing rather than the usual regurgitated info people get from books without X means Y and logic it totally right that's all that's all I'm saying we encourage a bit more analysis as opposed to the cursory, I've seen this, therefore this. <laughs> it's like the proverbial husband and wife, where the wife says, why are you in a mood? And the husband says, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, but why are you in a mood? I'm not. I I've, I've seen your face. Yeah, it doesn't mean I'm in a mood, though. Which eventually leads to the husband getting pissed off, and the, and the proverbial wife saying, see, I knew you were in a mood. Self-defeating two-dimensional paradox. It's Gibbs paradox. Um, anyway, so this is very much a, a kind of look at that. We'll expand on some of the terms that are by and large connected towards reading people in order to better understand how we would use them, right? So, yeah, so let me know if you think it's a good idea. If it is... I will um, I'll look into it, right, and, and how we can do this in the best way. Um, just as a side note as well, it's just popped into my head. Uh, uh, if you're not a part of the, of the network, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's a small private collected group of geniuses that I have. Uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful humans, and I'm going live in there very soon. Doing the monographs lives. If you're not signed up to the uh, 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 the email list on omniscientinsights.com, do that now. I'll be sending out details through there. Um, wow, well, lots of comments coming in. All right, let's have a look. Hey, Julie's here. I read swearing is a sign of intelligence. I read that as well, you know. I mean, there is there is some discussion around the area. To me, I I take umbrage with swearing being a, a connection towards intelligence personally. To me, swearing is more a sign of the size of your vocabulary. Because that being a size of your vocabulary doesn't mean that your vocabulary is small or massive. It just means though these are the most descriptive ways that you can describe some of the things that you're looking at, right? 
I don't really uh, have a lot of truck with uh, the modern systems of intelligence. It, like, what is intelligence? I could seem smart, but then again, I'm just really remembering a lot. You know, these are the qualities there. Um, lately, I realized, uh, sorry, this is coming in from Patrick Jane. Uh, yes, that Patrick Jane, if you are just listening to this. Lately, I realized people say, why did he do that? Why did she do that? Why does he act crazy? They never think about it. <laughs> oh, God, that's like a knee-jerk reaction for me to get on my old man bandwagon. Uh, old man soapbox, not bandwagon. I was uh, explaining the, the bandwagon fallacy earlier. See what I mean? My, my head's fried today. Um, but, yeah, there is a reason to that. Uh, and it, it it comes back to a term I was poking uh, I was poking some of my friends with earlier, but this one is actually applicable. It's it's uh, it's intellectual laziness. Why did he do that? Why did she do that? Why does he act crazy? Somebody says it's this. You go, oh cool. Blank blank filled in that moment, right? You don't have to think uh, any further about what it is or it isn't as a result. And the great thing about the, the notion of intellectual laziness is in order for you to know or rather have a good grounding in what it is that works within your area, you have to investigate the things that challenge it. You have to. So for me, when I started out as a, as a mentalist, I had to investigate psychic phenomena in order to prop properly formulate an opinion around that so I could better navigate what it was that I was doing. These types of things. If you're going to uh, have a staunch view of atheism, you should be actively looking at religions and religi re religiosity, I believe is the term, right? There is, a, there is a degree of openness that is inherent within that particular process. If you are going to be comfortable in your views, rather lacking the critical thought, rather than lacking the critical thought, you need to explore the areas that you don't know. Simple. Anyway. Right? Here we go. So, the science of reading people. <laughs> the buzzword of buzzword. If you want to think that's what the proper podcast title was, or rather is in that way. So, Nonverbal communication, right? That is, that is the big one, the big kahuna, the the body language, the uh, nonverbal decoding, or whatever you know, the desperate search for synonyms to try and make yourself sound smarter than what you actually are. Uh, now, uh, research in nonverbal communication it helps us understand how behaviors can correspond to uh, emotions or intentions, essentially, right? But with that, it's important to remember that crossed arms doesn't mean I'm not engaged. Crossed arms could also mean you're cold, you're showing off your tattoos, you know, you're comfortable, <laughs> you're, you're conscious of your belly, a bunch of things in that way. And there is the percentage algorithm that, that changes dependent upon who says it. But by and large, the, it, it's in reference towards communication in that nonverbal communication takes up the most, uh, uh, the most part of communication, right? When that falls apart straight away, <laughs> right, that can be a bias there straight away. When you can think that, well, I only need to observe the non-verbals in order to gain a, a, a basic fundamental understanding of this person's communication pattern. I, I love... <laughs> that... <laughs> I love to grab my pecs. Yeah, I do. Have you ever noticed as well? I'm, I'm sure people on YouTube that have... Um, this is starting to become like an ADHD stream. Oh, this! Oh, this! Oh, this! Oh, this! But, like, as a side note, have you ever noticed that when Chris Evans laughs, he leans back and touches his boob? <laughs> just as, a, just as a, an aside, doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it's just one of those things when he laughs, he comes back and touches his boob. There you go. Bit, bit of free information for you. And, um... If you haven't listened to 
the podcast uh, episode he was in with Pete Holmes. I encourage you to do so. It's uh, uh, I encourage you to do so if you're a fan of Chris Evans, because it was a, it was a lovely, warm, detailed, conscious discussion of of certain things and it was great to listen to him speak on those topics rather than get the the same 30 to 45 thousand questions in a row from when he's doing press for some whatever film he's in anyway so how can we expect to bias ourselves right from the get-go if we are focusing on non-verbal communication being the most predominant part of communication as a whole right how about if i'm doing this right now my nonverbal communication isn't massive, but I'm doing my best to communicate hugely through my verbals, through my vocals, uh, and other such patterns that way. And then it gets into the, the, the detailed specifics of, well, just because something doesn't speak, it makes it not like it's this, there's too much um, wishy washiness within that area the whole thing falls apart and it is like um trying to spot lies that's a bias if you're looking for lies you'll find them <laughs> noticing them that's a different thing and this is what i mean about the changing aspect of critical thinking so when you're looking at the powers of non-verbal communication does it hold a particular strength to it oh, of course it does in that way of course it does. But if you don't think about the context, you could attribute how I'm talking now to gestural asymmetry. Which, if you if you follow the textbooks, we're looking at me being incongruous and therefore disingenuous or, or inauthentic. When really, all I'm doing is leaning on my left side, gesturing with my right, because, you know, I'm a righty. That's the one that I would go to first. Because I've been stood up for, at this stage, what are, I've been stood up for four hours and 36 minutes it's a long time to be stood up my feet are hurting <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a minuscule load off this is what i mean context arguably should be the biggest part of that uh, the biggest part of that percentage structure right so we need to we need to change that uh, uh, connection towards nonverbal communication right from the get-go and the only we way we can do that is by encouraging people to think critically about what it is that they are observing and assessing in relation to the context that they're doing it and not relying on the knowledge of an equation to do their thinking for them right oh no dribbled right in the middle of the stream as well that's not going anywhere i can't, can't can't do that for the rest of it can i that's terrible maybe if maybe if i hold my uh my own peck that way <laughs> you just think i'm being very a uh, very sincere or insincere depending upon which way which way round that's coming through maybe if i lean a little bit <laughs> so yeah Nonverbal communication, a definitive part of reading a person, but you need to be thinking about that in the proper way. Because social perception. Well, perception on mass, really, perception of circumstance, perception of context in that way. But just to give you a term to go away with, social perception, right? It would be the cognitive processes of how we see others uh, uh, personalities their traits their emotions their quirkiness right because that can be very much influenced by our own experiences and biases but is that the truth of how it's communicated is that the truth of how it's being communicated to you right it, th these these ridiculous notions that I'm about to tell you about, I understand were a plight of primary schools uh, the world over. But there was one such thing that existed within my primary school that you, if you were a guy, you got one ear pierced. If you were getting any pierced at all, you got one done because girls got two done. However, if you got the left one done, that was normal. If you got the right one done, you were gay. No, 
not that there was any good or bad notion attached to that of of being gay that was just you essentially coming out <laughs> which we think about it is fucking nonsensical in that way but some of these things still happen right some of these things still happen the world over now uh some of the ones that come to mind because i am getting on a bit so these these characters are within easy reach of my memory and unless you're english i don't know that you'll know them because i don't know that these names travel very well overseas dale winton lawrence llewellyn bowen social perception dale winton was a tv presenter presented supermarket sweep was a very effeminate man both in his speech patterns his non-verbal communication his his actions his mannerisms his gestures and people immediately thought he was gay there was this big question and then he went up and went in a relationship with nel mcandrew uh, the first, one of the first live action uh, i say live action the live action cosplayer model ladies for laura croft in there was this oh same for Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, and in a famous interior designer, had these big flowing locks of hair, and he was very kind of thespian in his movements and flamboyant in his dress. Uh, uh, uh. And uh, there was this general consensus that people understood through the papers that Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen was gay. And yet he's married with two kids, or a few kids, I forget the number. We're dealing with a celebrity that was on on TV primarily in the early 90s. It's been a while since I've flippantly thought of him in that way. So this is the connection towards social perception. The, the, the media en masse were ascribing their perception to people that were just living. <laughs> right? They were just doing their thing. They weren't looking at the information for how it's being communicated. They were looking at the information through the lenses of their own perception of what would sell papers, what would create discussions. Right? So it might very well be that the, the guy in the corner of the gym, you know, putting on fake tan and complaining at people walking past him in his video is influencer driven for the sake of views and fabulous comments of him getting his man boobs out. But it could just as easily be the same guy filming himself doing reps to try and pass an exam. And the statement of the exam is that he needs people to see his form and his technique and how he's doing it. If people are walking past, they can't properly assess. It might be a rarity, because as I understand it, very few PT training exams allow you to video and send in your um, uh, 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 your 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 tests towards that. But it does go on. So there's a perceptual quality within that. How do you mitigate those kinds of influences? You need to do a lot of investigation within yourself, right? For every bit that uh, Justin Bieber annoys me, Jennifer Lopez annoys me twice as much. <laughs> and yet she's all over the news. People, I mean, people both love her and hate her seemingly in equal measure. But there is a social perception for me that exists within that, that if she, I don't know, I, I realize she doesn't, but if she went in to do any kind of philanthropic work, I might immediately go to, oh, sod off, J-Lo. <laughs> right? And miss the importance of what it is that she's saying just because she's saying it. There is a perception that's involved within that. Think of how many times when I say you have done this. I mean, as a general you. You may have done this as a specific you. I don't know. You're not here to talk to me. But think of how many times some, let's use, let's use it, someone has said this person is um arrogant egocentric right and really all the person in question has done is be being confident about what it is that they're doing just that the 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 originator of the slur of ego doesn't feel as confident about what it is that they do so they lash out perception you need to review these these connections within yourself. That's why I'm as a as a quick little 
thing that I talk about. That's why I'm such a fan of the question that came up through Super Forecasting. What if I'm wrong? You're arrogant. I'm mad I'm thinking, what if I'm wrong? This idea I just had for a, 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 for a, a YouTube series could be pretty good. What if I'm wrong? Right? We've all seen it. I know a couple of guys... I, no, that's not fair. That was a flippant term. I know technically one person. He knows the other people who I have met. I don't really know them. But I know one guy who is a, a devout flat earther. To me, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> Couldn't be any more ridiculous. You know, for this to be a belief that goes... The, the the world over that people invest in is a, is a is a scathing indictment of the educational system that that exists however if i'm to properly listen to whatever is being said in order to critically assess and and then debunk or provide feedback or a rebuttal or some kind of uh, a to and fro towards the conversation I have to remove the social perception of him being a fucking idiot because then I'm not really listening. I'm judging. And that's the difference in that scenario. Right? So social perception is another term that we can put out there a little bit for for people to investigate. Right? People have assumed, and when I say this, I find it lovely. Because it's a compliment towards me. And I find it humbling and lovely. Sincerely. But just because I am on a podcast, or I've devoted over two-thirds of my life to it, doesn't mean I know everything on the topic. There is always something else to be learnt. Always something more to investigate. Always something more to grow with in that way. Right? This is why when people <laughs> ask me, you know, how can these how can these skills be used, I have like an overload of of connections to it. Because the short answer really is, well, how can they not be used? <laughs> I'm aware of everything that you're not. <laughs> right? And but again, that that's that's the social perception that's connected to me being on a podcast or me being an author of a book or whatever it is. There's lovely compliments, but it doesn't mean that I am definitively the only expert in the field. I mean, you would know by now that I don't believe experts exist anyway, right? Which, again, is connected to a social perception, <laughs> you know? And we're, we're not going to go into the DK stuff right now, but that's, that's another term, social perception. Be aware of it. Then we would need to get into things like uh, behavioural and forensic psych. Let me have some... Water. My my cough's going, so uh, I just have a a bit of a a dry throat a little bit more quickly. Oh, I didn't drool again there. Well, I didn't drool. I dribbled. My love, look. My love, I dribbled live on camera. How silly. People are going to think I'm mainlining some kind of hallucinogenic substance or something. Anyway, behavioral and or forensic psych. Whatever kind of analysis it is that explores the underlying reasons for people's behaviors. This is... <laughs> Let's go. Try not to do a wet t-shirt this time. I'm trying. I'm trying. Can you imagine how horrible that would be? I am a very hairy man. It would be like a a dog in a hosepipe. <laughs> um, that's a digression, though. You don't really need that image in your head. How does somebody motivate themselves? What does somebody do in their sad? What kind of an effect does rewards have on somebody? How does somebody learn? These are all matters that are affected. There's thousands more. These are, but these are all matters that are affected by this kind of psychological breakdown. 
you could look at anything from Schwartz's values to virtues to um, to ocean to uh, I mean again I'm having a Hicks law problem too many to, to kind of stutter over the the, the 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 vast psychological dynamics that are involved are are well worth reading. But we'll take some time because there's lots and lots and lots of things to discuss and discover. But within that kind of practice is the notion of adhering to one particular technique too much because it's comfortable for you or it sits well for you or there's a lot of people around you that connect to this technique. So it feels like a something that's stronger than something else. Right? This is a dynamic that allows you to, to, to better understand how somebody might act in a situation or how they have acted in a situation that's led up to that particular stage. You know, profiling, criminology, uh, for as much as the they have become buzzwords thanks to the, the rise in detective shows, but um, the, 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 the diligent practice of it are how people can make these kind of informed decisions in order to catch criminals that are on the run and this type of thing. Oh, I saw amen to that, Craig. Let's have a look what Craig said. Uh, an expert is defined to me as an X is the past and a spurt is a drip under pressure. <laughs> we always have more to learn, no matter how good we are. Totally. Totally. Everyone's got a plan till they get punched in the face, right? Um, are you listening, Jake Paul? I cannot wait for that man to get knocked out on Netflix. <laughs> That's a side note. But definitely a social perception that he is using to his advantage. Um, but it, it, it irritates me. But it's very obviously a, a, a kind of character that he's putting forward. No, I refuse to believe that anybody can be that much of a bell end all day, every day. Um, what was the uh, the Watson phrase um, from uh, uh, from Sherlock? You can't fake being such an annoying dick all the time. <laughs> there you are. Uh, I'm I'm using a Sherlock quotes for you, Jake Paul. There you go. We move on to things like a uh, 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 linguistics uh, bias, fallacial discussions. Notice I said fallacial discussions, and not the other one. That sounds kind of close. Get your minds out of the gutter, you dirty people. But these are the types of terms that I I want. I would ideally I would like more in everyday life. For people who are outside of the fields of work, right? If you if you, if you work within linguistics, you'll know about that all the time. If you work within behavioural psych, you'll know about that all the time. If you work within, uh, uh, you know, a social perceptual uh, constructs, you'll know about that all the time, and and the effects that this can have on the way that somebody processes information, because that's all, uh, uh, really, the conversion of observed data to knowledge that you can act upon is that's all it is it's a critical thinking process there are other macro elements that you put on in terms of your memory and your mindset and these other macro level skills but if you're going to harness the elements you've got to be able to process it properly you know so there we go let me know what you think of that idea um, it's not that I, I am low on ideas, but I'm, I'm quite fond of that, <laughs> quite fond of that one. And I don't know if it's a fondness because of, of all of the, uh, bubbles we can burst. <laughs> I don't know if that's solely the case or not. Um, but yeah, with that in mind, guys, it's been lovely to see you kind of, <laughs> uh, you know, you're your YouTube profile pictures and the like. And um, until next time, I'm going to love you and leave you. Bye-bye for now.